Hi, this is a follow-up to the tutorial I did earlier on velocity time graphs. It's just an example just to demonstrate some features again. You might even like to try it. But what we've got here is a cyclist leaves her home age and travels along a straight road. During the first 8 seconds she accelerates to a speed of 12 meters per second after which she travels at a constant speed for a further 15 seconds. A cat jumps out into the road and she immediately applies the brakes and retards uniformly to come to rest. The motion takes 26 seconds. Sketch a velocity time graph, often known as a TV graph, and find her acceleration when she leaves home, her retardation when braking for the cat, and the total distance travelled before coming to rest. So you might like to have a go at this and uh, just pause the video and come back when ready and I'll run through the solution with you. Okay, well let's just see how you might have got on. Well, first of all, we need to sketch the velocity time graph or TV graph. So we need to have a vertical axis, that would be our velocity measured in meters per second, V bracket meters per second. And a horizontal axis here for the time taken, t, and that's measured in seconds. So you'd expect to see some labels on your axis. Now she starts from her home when t equals zero. So we'll have t equals zero here, and she accelerates at a constant rate. It doesn't say that a constant rate, but I'll assume that it is a constant rate for eight seconds. So We'll make that uh, 8 there. So if she accelerates at a constant rate up to a speed of 12 meters per second, we'll make that the 12, then we would expect to see a straight line rising to the 12 after 8 seconds. I'll just draw a dotted line in there, okay? Don't have to do that, but uh, it might just help to section that off. Now she moves at a constant speed, so she'll be going at the 12 meters per second, constant speed now for a further 15 seconds. So we'll take that up to about there. And we'll mark in that at that point, that time directly underneath there was an extra 15 seconds. Well, that's going to bring us up to 23 seconds. Now the whole motion takes 26 seconds. She sees this cat jump out, applies her brake so she's going to come to rest. She's going to retard or decelerate as some people say. So it's going to take her a further three seconds. So let's just imagine that that's the further three seconds there, bringing this up to 26 seconds. So we would join from here back down to the 26. I'll also put that dotted line back in there, okay, up to there. So that's our velocity time graph sketched. Now we should be in a position to answer these questions. So starting then with A, let's just draw a line down there. Starting with A, what have we got? We've got to find her acceleration when she leaves home. Well, the acceleration, A, is given by the gradient of this line. Gradient will be a positive gradient because it's the increase in velocity, so it's increased by 12 over the time taken. So we've got an increase of 12 over the time taken, which is 8. 12 divided by 8 is 1.5, so her acceleration when she leaves home is 1.5 meters per second per second. Now for part B, we've got to find her retardation when braking for the cat. Well, first of all, what we'll do is this section here, we'll work out the acceleration. The acceleration is given by the gradient again, and we can see that the gradient is negative. We've lost 12 meters per second in 3 seconds. So 
we've lost 12, so that's minus 12 in 3 seconds. And that clearly is minus 4. Minus 4 meters per second per second. Well, that's the acceleration, but retardation, sometimes called deceleration, is the magnitude of the acceleration. And that will be just the 4. 4 meters per second per second. So, what brings us now on to the last part, part C. Now we've got to work out the total distance travelled before coming to rest. And that's given by the area under the graph. And we could work out the area of the three sections, the triangle here, the rectangle and the last triangle, and add them all together. But it's much quicker to recognise that this shape is a trapezium. It's got two parallel sides. And the area of a trapezium, I'll just write it up here, is given by the sum of the parallel sides. So if the parallel sides were A and B, we would add them together. And then you times by the distance apart. We'll call that H. And then divide that answer by 2. So that's the area of a trapezium. So we can apply it here and it will be a lot quicker. So the distance travelled, let's just put dist for short, travelled, is going to equal then the sum of the parallel sides. So it will be this one plus this one. 26 plus 15, the gap from 8 to 23. 26 plus 15. And then we need to multiply that by the distance apart, which will be the 12. So we just slip a 12 in there, and we divide all of this by 2. And if you work that out, you'll end up with 246. And the unit of distance here is metres, so we'll have 246 metres. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea to how we can use the ideas of gradient for acceleration and distance as being the area under the graph, especially this one where we've got the area of a trapezium. You'll find you'll often get questions like this with this shape here. OK, well, that brings us now to the end of this tutorial. And uh, as usual, I hope that has given you some idea of how to handle questions of this nature.